Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna talk about the shortcut to risk management. So, not to spoil it or anything, but there is no shortcut. And I say this because I have so many people come to me and say, Dimitri, I want to work in risk management or I want to work in quantitative finance, you know, but I don't have the money to go to grad school or, you know, I don't have the money to come to the US or I'm already, you know, 35 years old. Um, I, don't, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to spend to get a master's degree or, you know, is there a shortcut? Can I just get a designation? Like, is an FRM good enough? Or can I get a CFA? Well, that fix everything. Can I be a CPA, right? There's always someone looking for the shortcut and I'm gonna tell you there is no shortcut but I am going to go through um, some demographics with a little bit of data here to kind of show you how the industry looks as a whole um, this is extremely biased in a sense that um, I took all this data I took uh, the data I have is actually my data I went into my LinkedIn I went into my contacts and I've pulled 24 people that are people I worked with in risk management uh, I know a lot about them personally. I know they're actually doing quantitative finance. They don't just have some general title, which a lot of people seem to have like titles and things that don't mean anything in finance. And so this is gonna be true data on risk management. Let's dive on in here and talk about their demographics and I'll give you a little overview of what risk management looks like um, from a sky view. All right, so this first chart here is the number of degrees. So this is going to be a little biased, and I say this because if you have a PhD, uh, most programs will give you a master's degree to go with it. So if you have like an undergrad, say in finance, and then you go and you get a PhD in like econometrics or something, they'll give you like a master's in econ, and you have a PhD in econometrics, or they'll give you like a master's in statistics, but a PhD in like, I don't know, uh, time series analytics or something. But typically they pair together. So Let's look at this chart real quick here. So out of the 24 people here, 13 of them have two degrees or more. So what you should notice here is there is nobody with one degree. So you can't have an undergraduate degree and work in risk management from this sample of data we have. Um, I have not come across anybody. I guess there's one person I've seen that works in model validation, but I've never personally worked with them. I don't even know if they have them doing actual validation work or if they're just doing like the bottom end like data processing and documentation. But out of all these people I've worked with closely, um, 13 of them have two degrees. They have an undergraduate degree and they have a master's degree or an undergrad and a PhD. Eight people have three degrees. So most of these eight are people that have an undergraduate degree who got a PhD and then ended up with a master's just because they got the PhD. And then out of those, two people have four degrees and one person, yes, they have five degrees. So you can see in general to work in risk management and this applies again towards quantitative finance, but this is specific for risk management. You have to have a graduate degree. Um, I cannot emphasize this enough. I know people say, oh, Dimitri, I need some shortcut. I need, I need something, like I just don't have X, Y, and Z. Well, every single person in this industry, and I know that's a way overstatement there, but the vast majority of everybody, so 90 plus percent, um, have to do this. They have to go this route. If you want to do risk management, you have to do this to get there. So now the second point here I get a lot is like, Dimitri, I just don't have the money to come to the US. You know, I, I just wanna get a degree here in country X, Y, and Z. We're really great, we're really smart. You know, we're better than the US. I hear all this crap all the time. Um, yeah, you might have a great degree, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to get a job working for usually a big company in the US. If you wanna work abroad, that's awesome. And this data, again, is somewhat biased in the sense that I work in the US, I primarily work with US companies, but that being said, let's look at how many people have US degrees. So two people I know have zero degrees from the US. So they went to school in another country. Eight people I know have one degree from the US. 11 people I know have two degrees from the US and three people have three degrees I know from the US. So you can do the math here and kind of compare this to the number of degrees. So like the person, for example, that had five degrees, there's only one of them. Um, two of the degrees are from another country, whereas three degrees came from the US. Um, you can kind of do some inference here and look at it, but the reality is, is that it's very, very difficult to get to the US, to work in the US in risk management um, on the banking side here. So these exclude all these hedge funds and stuff. This is mainly banking. But again, I, this does apply a lot to other sides of quantitative finance. Um, these people essentially have to come to the US to get a US degree to work in the US. I know it is a pain, but that being said, the vast majority of these people are actually from other countries, which leads us to our next chart here. 
This next chart is whether they're born in the US or not born in the US. Um, I didn't say citizenship because a lot of these people are older, so they were from another country, they moved to the US, they went through the process to get citizenship or their green card here. Um, but that being said, out of those 24 people, 19 of them are not born in the US. Five of them are born in the US. And to be honest with you, um, a lot of risk management is just, it's all from abroad. Um, it's again, it comes down to the fact that most Americans don't get degrees that line up with risk management and quantitative finance. And so the vast majority of the employees that work in these areas come from other countries. So talking about like a lot of the Americans don't have the degrees that line up with doing risk management and quantitative finance. Uh, it's important to look here that two people, two people out of 24 here, um, don't have a STEM degree that work in risk management. So this is fairly rare, but again, they still have master's degrees in something. Um, 22 people do have a STEM related degree. So statistics, uh, engineering, a lot of different sciences, mathematics, right? 22 people have the STEM degree. So if you're in a finance degree, this is not a STEM degree. Um, if you're in a finance degree with a STEM designation, you're still not a STEM degree. Um, but you having an actual STEM degree, having that experience, 22 people um, have that. So to really get into risk management, you really do need a very quantitative degree, um, something that's STEM based in general. And this leads us to round off the education portion here, which is the graduate degrees. So as I mentioned before, we looked at the first graph, which was how many degrees they have, right? There was a possibility two degrees can mean like two undergrad degrees, but that's not true here. If you look at this chart, uh, 24 people have a graduate degree, so master's or PhD. Um, zero people have just an undergraduate degree. So to work in risk management, you do have to have an advanced degree. And one of the most common degrees for risk management is statistics. Um, the, the reason being is that risk management is very stats focused. All the models we have are statistical models. We do statistical analysis. So this is in contrast to people who say, oh, Dimitri, I have a CFA, for example. I do all this financial modeling, or I have an MBA and I'm doing all this financial modeling for this bank. I want to get into risk management. Um, th this is not the same type of modeling. Cash flow modeling is not statistically driven. Most banks don't have stats models for those because our traditional conceptually sound models um, that banks use to do that. That's not a stats driven decision. And so therefore typically stats degrees are not used in those areas, but risk management is heavily stats driven. Um, that being said here, you can see this final chart. So out of the 22 people, 11 people do not have a stats degree, 13 did. So that's about 50-50. However, I put this big disclaimer on here. Um, out of those 11, a lot of those have like a PhD in economics. So they took time series econometrics, they took like different types of statistics classes, all these classes are statistics, but their degree is not a statistics degree. And so if you actually looked at people that took statistics and had some focus in statistics, it'd be a lot higher in the number of statistics focus that you have, but again, they're not statistics degrees. So just to wrap this video up with a quick message here is that there are no shortcuts. Like every single person in this industry has done a ton of work, spent a ton of money and a ton of time to get where they're at. And I know people are saying, oh, Dimitri, I really, really like it. I really wanna get into it. Isn't there some shortcut? Like just tell me what the shortcut is. There's no shortcut. Okay, there's no shortcut. I had to do an undergraduate degree in finance and learn the hard way that I wanted to be into quantitative side, not the traditional side. I took a year off and worked, and then I had to go back to school. And yes, I paid for my graduate school, and I paid for the vast majority of my undergraduate degree, and so I have a massive amount of student loans all focused around my, you know, my education here. But at the end of the day, I knew that was what made me happy, and I chose to do it because I really, really wanted to do it for a career. Um, the money is nice. It's nice to make a lot of money. It's a good investment if you get the job because you can get the return to pay off the loans. But in general, there are no shortcuts in quantitative finance. Um, you'll see people with like physics degrees. Again, that's not even a shortcut. That's just you took a different route because a lot of those guys all have PhDs in physics. So you think about a PhD in the US is like five to seven years if it's a good PhD. Um, the three-year degrees are not very good. I know other countries have lesser degrees as well. And that kind of wraps up the video on the fact that you need to come to the US if you want to work in the US. Um, if you want to work like in your home country, you want to work in China, Italy, Germany, France, UK, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, like wherever, you can go get a degree in your own country and you can work there. But it's really, really hard to get to the US and to work in the US in risk management, like work on Wall Street, for example, uh, if you don't have those graduate degrees and the US degrees and work in the quantitative finance realm. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.